Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? You're gonna hear a lot of noise in the background of this video. I can hear cars right outside my window driving by. My printer's going off. I'm printing off things for the daycare this morning. It is Dr. Seuss birthday. So uh, we are going to be having a birthday party. I am in charge of craft day. And so I made a photo booth, uh, cat in the hat. And we are um, going to be doing a little cat in the hat, little uh, faces. And um, we are all to wear hats today at the daycare. So um, we are going to take our pictures in our photo booth and um, have a good time at daycare today. And um, I'm also printing off uh, games for the daycare for tomorrow because it's Friday fun day. And you may also hear um, my son's TV. Um, he's here and he is watching his shows upstairs. And so just in case you hear all that going on in the background, that's what's happening. So um, all this noise going on around here. And so I wanted to make this video in a ways. Let's see if I'm out of paper. Ugh. Okay. So I want to... Um, make this video and um this is about a rapture dream that i had last night um i don't know about you guys but i went to bed last night praying for a rapture dream and i had one um i actually had two and um i woke up this morning just saying thank you jesus for answering my prayers um he really has been answering prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer for me this week. So I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for that. But God laid something on my heart this morning when um, I woke up. It really had nothing to do with my dreams. My dreams were not very good, um, rapture dreams, but it stirred up a rapture feeling vibe in me when I woke up this morning. So I'm going to explain my dreams real quick and then tell you what God has laid on my heart. Um, one dream was about, um, I was kind of with some kids from high school, um, and I was with my ex-husband. Um, I did not know my ex-husband in high school, just so you guys know, um, it was way after high school, um, when I met him, but we were, um, at like a workplace, which is kind of weird. A workplace I've never worked at before. And we were um, talking about the rapture and how, oh, a lot of people um, believe in the rapture. Well, this one girl started crying and she was saying, oh, the rapture is going to happen like right now. And and any second now, and she was crying because everybody was making fun of her. And we were all sitting around a table, and everybody was just sitting there laughing at her for saying that. And everybody's like, oh, people have been saying that for years. Um, and it was one of the things that I know my ex-husband used to say in our marriage. And um, I don't know why you Christians think that God's coming back now because you guys have been saying that for a long, long time. And she was just in tears because she was like, nobody ever believes me, but this is what I believe. And then they started persecuting her like she was going to get fired and they were going to tell on her and they were going to send a message to the boss and they were just going to harass her. And um, I stood up and I said, hey, I believe this girl. I believe the exact same thing as this girl. And I stood up. And I was like um, kind of in charge of something at this workplace. And I was saying, hey, and I, and I, 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 I picked her up. She was like on the ground crying um, about how they were just persecuting her, persecuting her. And I picked her up and I said, hey, I'm right there with you. I believe the exact same thing as you do. And he is coming back. And um, then my dream ended. And, um, and then I had a second dream. This dream wasn't really about the rapture, but it was about faith. And so I'll explain this one real quick. 
this dream was about, um, again, I was in some kind of workplace setting. Um, and this was kind of a continuation of that other dream, I think it was. Um, but it was different people. And so no longer was that girl who was crying in my dream, but this time it was me being persecuted and they were going to lock me up in a room, uh, and they locked the door behind me and there was a whole bunch of people around me and they were going to <laughs> put my head in a sink of pink hair dye we're going to dunk my head in a water of poo and other things I can't remember. I just remember the poo and the pink hair dye. <laughs> uh, oh, and smelly fish. It was going to have fish smell to it for some reason. And if you guys know the interpretation of this, let me know because I'll just tell you what I got out of the dream, but it's crazy. And so... They were going to dunk my head in this poo water, pink poo water, and I wasn't scared. And I was just like, go right ahead. And I'm like, here, let me take off my earrings and let me um, get ready for this, you know, and um, you guys go right ahead. And they were all like, what? And I was like, you know what's going to happen? You guys are going to dunk my head in this water and God is... Um, going to let me breathe on my own. And when you pull my hair up, my head up out of this water, then you are going to see that I am more beautiful than I ever was. And they said, what? They were like, you're going to smell like fish and you're going to smell and you're going to stink like poo and you're going to, um, have this horrible pink hair everywhere and, and, we're going to make fun of you. And I was like, haven't you ever heard of Daniel in the lion's den? Have you ever heard the story in the Bible of the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I said, none of those things are going to happen. I said, God is on my side and he'll fight my battles for me. And God is going to do miracles and you guys are all going to fall on your knees. And you are going to worship my God. And I seem to have power, you know. And I seem to have, you guys can't even touch me with a 10-foot pole. With your mocking me and your persecution. And, you know, I just felt like I had this power. And I was ready to go. Go dunk my head in a sink full of poo. I don't care. And my dream, my dream ended. So when I woke up this morning, I just felt, you know what, God, thank you so much for answering my prayers. I've been asking for a rapture dream. And I've been asking for the feeling of um, feeling like, where where are we at in our times right now? Because... It has been years since I have felt this close to God where I felt like I am on a spiritual high when I felt, um, again, like hmm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm looking out for God again. Um, I can be honest with you guys. The last time I felt this way was 2015 during the blood moons. Um, I started having rapture dream after rapture dream after rapture dream. And, um, I have written down those dreams and I had them on my old channel that I deleted and I am going to find those dreams. Um, I still have them and I am going to record them again and read them off to you in another video. But as of right now, these, this feeling of having the Holy Spirit in me again is reminding me of Acts 2 when the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. Um, I have been watching the Ashbury revival and what those students are doing. I am just saying thank you Jesus 
for showing the Christians that there is light at the end of the tunnel and you are our hope. And Jesus is saying here um, in 2.17, in those last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show you wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I love those verses in Acts where I know God is going to keep that promise. We are going to have dreams and we are going to have visions and we are going to know exactly when God is returning and... I really feel like the Holy Spirit is being poured upon people. Um, I think that is why the division in marriages is happening right now. Um, I went through a divorce this year. The, this is a channel about being a Christian single mother. And I really feel like it's the division of the sheep and the goats. Just like the Bible says. God says, hey, I got your back. I'm separating you from evilness. I am going to pour out my spirit on you. You are going to prophesy in my name. You are going to stand up for your faith. Um, you are the light of the world. As long as we have breath and we are here, um, until God comes gets us in that rapture, God says, spread the gospel. So that's what um, this channel was really originally going to be a craft channel, a reselling channel. And God has just pushed me in a whole other direction and saying, no, you're going to preach the gospel. Um, and you're going to use your singleness, your divorce, um, and the journey that you have gone through in your marriage as you have struggled. And you are going to turn around and you're going to use it for my glory. And you're going to testify in my name, no matter what the persecution it comes whether or not um, there is trials and tribulations and whether um, your ex-husband has fallen away from God or not. God says, you are going to remain faithful to me and you are right in this situation for the time like this. And it is time. It's your time. And I feel like he's telling a lot of people who are looking for his return, um, I'm coming, I'm coming and it's your time. You were born for this. I, I know I was born to be a mother. I know I was born to be a wife. I know I was born um, to be a Christian. And I know that it is time for me to stand up for what I believe in, my, my faith, my love for Jesus Christ. And um, he's given me these dreams and these visions of what's to come. And um, I know that that is what is in store for me. And so as I am living in this crazy world and I'm having these weird dreams um, that don't make any sense at all, know that God is telling me that it's my time. It's my time to stand up for my faith. And I really think that persecution is coming. And um, I know that God's got me. There's nothing that anybody can do. And I really feel like there are going to be miracles. Like when persecution starts happening to Christians, miracles are going to happen. And I feel like there are young people right now on fire for Christ. It's not going to affect the whole world and everybody in it. But there are certain people that God says time is running out and that person's going to be saved because he already knows who's going to ask him into it, their heart, you know. And he's going to say, that person over there, I put you in that path of that person as that witness. And it's going to take this miracle for that person to come to know me. And it's going to be last minute. But they're on my book. They're in my book. 
And so, God is saying, I'm going to use you as just a single Christian mom who's had a rough life in marriages. She can't even keep a marriage together. Um, even if she thinks she's married a Christian man, it failed. He failed her. That man didn't keep his promise to her. And a lot of women in that situation will just fall apart. And God has been building me up in my divorce and my singleness more than me falling apart. And I feel like he's using my divorce and he wants me to uh, speak on the behalf of my faith. So last night in the sky, we can see Venus. I think it was Venus and something like that. Two planets together, big bright stars. And on the news, all these photographers with these big fancy equipment are taking pictures and they're like, whoa, this has never happened before. And we can see all these signs in the sky. You know what? I've been saying Jesus is coming back since 2015, since the blood moons and the revelation 13 sign in the sky, the wars, the rumors of wars, the famine, the pestilence, the red half for cows that are ready to be sacrificed in Israel and the things of all nations coming against Israel, Ezekiel 38, 39 more. It's coming. Jesus is coming. All these things are happening. The visions, the dreams, the signs in the heavens. And Christians are coming out of the corner, out of the woodwork. And a lot of these Christians are just normal people. Accountants and lawyers and just regular farmer people and RVers, they're coming out and they're say, standing up for their faith. Doesn't matter if their spouse agrees with them or not. Doesn't matter if their children agree with them or not. Doesn't matter what. But since the pandemic, these people are coming out of the, the churches. They're coming out of the, um, the homes, the families. They're standing up in their cities and online. A lot of things went online. And now people are speaking their mind on TV. It's, it's a lot easier for me to pick up my phone and talk to you than it is to see you. Because I don't work with you. I don't see you. I don't go shopping a lot anymore. And I don't like getting out along and around a lot of people anymore. I'm single mom. I'm poor. I have no money. And God says, I'm going to use you. And so, you know, I'm being used. And so, God says, you know what? Continue on with what you're doing at your workplace and with your marriage and with your children. Keep your focus on me and share your journey. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, I just pray that it blesses you. Ask God for those dreams and he'll give them to you. And it wasn't about the dream. The dream really didn't make any sense. But God answered my prayer. And it gave me the fire inside me for him. So I hope that encourages you. Have a blessed day. And I will make another video soon. Bye.